In this video, we're going to look at horizontal shifts of functions. We're going to start with our basic function, f of x, that looks like this. It's just a, a function that I've created, and we're going to focus on the end point, or the maximum and minima, uh, negative 4, 1. Down here we have 0, negative 1. Up here we have 2, 3. And over here we have 5, 2. Okay, so we're going to look at what happens when we have horizontal shifts of a function. And again, uh, as I explained in the vertical shifts, all functions follow these same basic principles. So if you can make sense of it now, then it also works for absolute value functions and quadratic functions. So it's really handy that these all kind of meet the same thing as long as they're written in function form. So what is a horizontal shift? We're going to rename. So when we, when we change a function from what we're given, we usually give it a new name. So I would call this new one g of x. And a horizontal shift in an equation or a function, would we would see a change within the function itself. So we would see something like x minus h. And the tricky thing here is that horizontal shifts kind of happen opposite of what we think should happen. So if there's a plus sign inside, so if it says x, well, we'll see, I think it's x plus 2. So we'll do x plus 3 just to be different. Um, what this means, so how would I get x plus 3? What, what would... Um, h have to be, what's this doing? This is actually moving the graph to the left. It looks like it should go to the right because it's a plus sign, but it actually shifts it to the left. And then if we have a minus in there, if it's like f of x minus 5, that's going to shift it to the right. So when we see a minus inside the parentheses or inside the function, that indicates that it's going to be a horizontal shift to the, what did I say, a minus sign, to the right. And if we see a plus sign, then that's going to be a horizontal shift to the left. And horizontal shifts, here I'll, uh, I'll discard this. Horizontal shifts are just taking the graph and moving it along this imaginary axis here. And when we move it, notice that uh, the x values are changing, but the y values stay the same. So when I move it this way, I've now moved it two units to the left. So I would say, can I write on this now? So let me go back to the PowerPoint. So if I was to move it here, I just moved it twice to the left. So this would be g of x is f of x plus 2 because I moved it to the left. So it's moving, again, when it's inside the function, it's kind of happening in the opposite way of what you think or what, what it appears that it should be doing. Unlike vertical shifts. With vertical shifts, if it said plus 2, that meant move everything up to. If it said minus 4, that meant move everything down 4 units. But with horizontal shifts, when it's inside the function, it is happening, it, it is moving in the opposite direction of what we think. Let's look at some examples. So we're given our function, this is our function f, and we want to create our function g, where g is given by f of x plus 2. So what does this mean? This means that there's going to be a shift to the left. Shift left two units. The way that I kind of justify why this makes sense, like why do we move left when it's a positive, is because now x has to work that much harder to get back to where it started. So it, it's like, take well, in this case, because it's plus two, it's kind of like it has to give that much. Um, so let's see. So it's going to move this two units to the left. So we'd now be at negative six, positive one here. And this would move two units to the left. So it would be at negative 2, negative 1. And this one would move two units to the left. So we'd be at 0, 3 instead of 2, 3. And this one moves two units to the left. So we're now at, instead of 5, we're at 3, 2. And if I connect these, oh, oh, I missed. Oh, let's try again. Oh, I got rid of my point too. If I connect these using as best straight segments that I can use, it should look like the same shape. It's just we took that shape and we just scooched over two units to the left. In our last example, we still have the same f of x over here. And this time it says that g of x is given by f of x minus 1. So that minus 1, what that's doing, now x has to work that much harder to get back to where it started. So this indicates that this is going to be a shift to the right. And it's going to be a shift to the right one unit. So all the y values will stay the same, it's just changing all of the x values. So now each x value would be x plus
plus 1 comma y. So negative 4, 1 would move one unit to the, uh, to the right, and it'd be at negative 3, 1. 0, negative 1 would move one unit to the right, so it'd be at 1, negative 1. 2, 3 would move one unit to the right, so it'd be at 3, 3, 3, 3. And 5, 2 would move over one unit to the right, so it'd be at 6, 2. 6, 2. And we're going to connect these with nice straight line segments. And again, the shape should be the same. The only thing that changed is the fact that it just moved one unit to the right.